Welcome to Just Relationships, the show that offers you concrete ways to make your relationships better. Whether it's your boss, your spouse, your children, or your friends, the quality of your relationships in life directly affects how you feel about yourself and the success you achieve. Your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer, a psychotherapist, telecoach, author, and seminar leader, will interview top experts to help you learn to manage this essential part of your life. And now, here's your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer. Greetings to you. Well, we are looking today at success, at success in life, success in career, and what it takes. And I'm just wondering uh, if you think my audience, if college, um, going to college is worth the return on investment, um, how can we leverage ourselves and our children to uh, have a happy, successful career. And uh, even if you don't happen to have children going to college at this point, we're looking at higher education and how people can learn from it really at any age. There are so many people going back to school. So welcome, Lindy and Tom Schneider. Welcome back. Thank you, Dr. Duffy. We're back. excited to be here. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. so glad. And your your book is entitled the, um, I'm sorry, College Secrets. Mm-hmm. College Secrets of Highly Successful People, Keys to Launching a Great Life. So would you say that it's important to go to college these days in general? You know, I think it depends on uh, the student it's it's more important that they choose a career and then the college because if they're choosing a career that doesn't need college, mm. then they don't need the debt either. Um, however, there are a lot of a lot of um, careers where you have to have that college degree, and a degree quite often is the first filter in any job application. Um, so. Uh, you know, so it, it's a mixed answer on that. It depends on the student and on mm. where they want to go. And I like that term you use, Lindy, first filter. And uh, are there um, bona fide successful career, careers, you would say, that don't require college? Actually, there are. Um, one of the things that's interesting is that uh, it, it the trades are really kind of uh, ignored in today's mm. uh, younger society. And, for example, there's a shortage of 60,000 truck drivers. Wow. They have 60,000. And and even in the city of Denver, uh, they're cutting down on the uh, number of uh, rail uh, trips they have. Uh, because they can't find enough engineers and bus drivers to uh, run the rapid transit system. Engineers and bus drivers. Huh. And and school districts are also really hurting to find school bus drivers. Really? Uh, oh, it seems like everyone in their retirement becomes a school bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, people people um, riding garbage trucks are making $90,000 a year. Wow. Boy, that and, that's a huge change from decades ago, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. And, we, and yeah. when, when not everybody went to college, um, the college experience uh, really was a dividing line as to the, the career path forward. Um, today... Um, it's not so much that way because so many people are going to college. And, and the only way that that's going to really be effective for you if you are going to college is if you go to college with intentionality mm-hmm. and, and do specific things while you're there that will lead to a career when you graduate. Mm. Tell us what they are. Well, there's, there's several things. Um, probably we kind of use a, uh, a superhero example uh, to define some of these things. But um, the first thing is to walk through walls, we call it. And that means that students need to get off campus, uh, interact with the community, the community leaders, the charities, the nonprofits, get involved in volunteering activities off of campus. 
that's where you're going to meet a lot of the movers and shakers or the people that know the movers and shakers in that community. And mm. they, uh, it also can be counted as work experience on a resume. One of the biggest challenges for college grads is that they've been in school for four to six years and they have no work experience. So doing that volunteer work gives you uh, the ability to put some of that as work experience on your resume and you can get in touch with the people who know the, the people that could potentially hire you once you graduate. Well, I think this is a wonderful idea, Tom Schneider, author of College Secrets, co-author with Lindy uh, of Schneider, College Secrets of Highly Successful People. Um, you know, I, I always lecture to my students, and I, I work with managers uh, in the American Management Association, teaching them how to really build winning teams and help uh, resolve conflict and and look at fi- uh, closing that performance gap. And I often tell them you must continue networking even when you are working. So many people stop ne- networking once they are working. And to, again, just what you said, you network within your industry and you network with other industries. I never thought to advise people to network while they are in college. Hmm. That is very good. And one of the things that we tell them is this is how you become fireproof. Now, by that, I mean you always have a job offer. You always have a recommendation or a referral people that you can turn to in the case in in if you are laid off and uh, you're building a superhero alliance basically not only people who are in the community but we say leap tall buildings and talk to those people that are further ahead than you in the field you want to be in because in effect those people are in your future they, so they can see your future, and they know how you can go from here to there. The, so you need a mentor, someone in your field. Okay, so leap tall buildings, you're saying find people in, in your field who are, who are doing well and invite them to mentor you? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And if nothing else, sit down, ask, ask them if they will have coffee with you or if you can buy them lunch. And then have a series of questions. Keep it short, maybe 15 minutes, unless they invite you to stay longer. Mm -hmm. And really get to know that person and get your questions answered. But have questions to ask. This is not a get together and and, uh, enjoy your coffee together. Become a buddy. (laughs) It is definitely intentionality. Intentionality. I love it. I think one of uh, it's funny that Tom mentioned the word "be your buddy." We are finding that more and more with young people is that um, some of them, when they graduate college and they start a start their career, they get a little bit disgruntled that they're not a buddy with their boss and they can't help make decisions for the company. And it's it's something that they have to learn. A lot of these young people are coming out of college not realizing there is a hierarchy and there is an authority in that company and they don't care as much about you as they do about that company hitting the bottom line and succeeding and they have to be a part of what the boss wants as as far as getting the company to where where it needs to go and that's been something we've been having to work with a lot of young people about yeah, and the idea of doing research on the company and really be becoming a team player. Yes. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think a lot of college age people are are so geared. They we I think the society has moved from very authoritarian and uh ma- a parent male and parent oriented to being child centered centered to the extreme and Absolutely. many many children are indulged in certain ways and given so much mm-hmm. without having to uh, work their way through high school or even have that as a as an odd job or mm-hmm. um, 
you know, buying their own clothes, you know, finding a way to have an allowance that's and helping out in the home. Mm. When I, as a psychotherapist, I'm sorry, I just, as a psychotherapist, so many of my clients will tell me that their teenagers don't help in the home at all. And I ask them, well, did they start helping when they were children? Did you teach them how to help uh, age related as children? Well, no. Well, how do you expect them as teenagers to even have that in the, on their uh, repertoire? Exactly. Yeah. And th- th- this is one of the things that another real problem with today's society and the younger generation, uh, especially in what we call the dangerous decade of decision making, the ages between 18 and 28, is that they have not learned how to be independent because mm. their parents have done everything for them all through 18 years. And then they go to college, and all of a sudden they're having to make all of these decisions about everything in their lives. And 60% of college freshmen experience what is called extreme overwhelm mm. because they have not learned how to manage, and they haven't been given the opportunity to manage parts of their lives and make some decisions while they were under their parents' uh, roof. And this is a a real challenge. We're dealing with a lot of kids 27, 28 years old now, long past college, and they're still just floundering, not knowing what to do and not not knowing how to make decisions on their own. And it's it's become a really crisis situation. And, And how do you have contact with people 27, 28? What's been interesting is that we've had... We've had uh, kids post-college reaching out to us uh, that have found out about us through our website or through webinars or through our coaching, and uh, they're saying, hey, I know I'm not in college anymore, or sometimes it's the parents that are contacting us that have found out about us, and they go, I'm not in college anymore, but I'm still struggling to find my way, Uh, Mm. and can you help? So we're actually working on developing a whole separate program for them for this, uh, you know, the 22 to 28 year olds, uh, which is more a career track uh, counseling and, and training program, so that they can finally get some some foundation under them, and gain a focus of where they should go from here. Yes, yes, and if they haven't known, if they, if they weren't mentored by you, um, in while they were pre college or college students, and and knew how to network and. Uh, do volunteer jobs, then what do they do? Well, uh, that's one of the problems we have in our society now is that they're they're lost, they're floundering. And, um, you know, it, it lends itself to a whole lot of issues where they just go, well, you know, I don't have a lot of work ethic because I haven't had to work in the past. And mm. I, I don't want to put a lot of effort into a job I don't like. Uh, yeah. There's all a whole host of issues that are have been created by uh, the parenting of this last generation, making sure that they had comfort level and everything, and everybody got trophies for participation, and there were no challenges that these kids had to to uh, address when they were growing up. Yes, yes. Oh, it's and my goodness, you guys must be geniuses that you can. <laughs> <laughs> how can you? How do you I do t- not claim genius right. status. I'm sorry, yeah. Doctor Duffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how do you turn this stuff around? You know, how, <laughs> except well, to say you, know, you don't want to live in your parents' basement, or maybe exactly. you do. If if mom still does your laundry, <laughs> right? Well, and yeah, you don't one have of the to things pay rent. That we, yeah, yeah. And one of the things that we tell them is that while they're in college, they need to see it as a four-year interview. This is not four years to to play and, you know, yes, try different things, but be professional in everything you do. It's that practicing professionalism while you're in college will set you up for when you get out. Now, um, one of the other things that we discovered is that a lot of students are, you know, you have the partiers, of course, and I'm not really addressing those. Um, there are other students that go in and think, okay, if I get straight A's, if I just, you know, keep my nose to the grindstone and get straight A's, then the whole world will open up to me. And that's not true either. Mm. 
we're, what we're finding is that um, the Fortune 500 companies, when they are faced with equal candidates, one has, uh, you know, or two, two promising candidates, let's sh- just say, one has gotten straight A's, the other one is a B student, um, but the B student because they've been involved with so many other things, they didn't have, they weren't able to keep their grade level at a perfect A. Instead, they were doing internships and volunteer work or side jobs, that kind of thing. The Fortune 500 companies, 90% of the time, will take the B student. Now, um, Robert uh, Richard Branson of uh, Virgin Airlines said it best. He said, I can teach someone the skill that I need in my company. I can't teach them social skills. Mm -hmm. And that's what so many students are lacking is this face-to-face, being able to communicate on the phone, being able to communicate in writing. They have the knowledge, but they haven't been putting it in practice. And, and that face-to-face communication, um, that's one of the things that a lot of our, our uh, students that we're coaching now, uh, they really struggle with. They, they grew up in a society of texting and, and uh, two-word sentences and, and Snapchat and, and Instagram and, uh, you know, little two-minute YouTube videos. And they don't, they don't have the natural skills that uh, their parents and grandparents learned instinctively because they've been living in a culture of of technology where before that we had to talk on the phone we had to meet face to face we had to get together with friends and neighbors in order to have that relationship and the facebooks and and all of these other tech things they give the illusion of communication and Mm -hmm. of uh relationship but it's really a, a substantial step back from having a genuine relationship with someone. And a lot of our students are, are just saying, how do I carry on a conversation with someone? Uh, how do I keep from being bored after 30 seconds of someone else saying something that I'm not interested in? Yeah, and just as you say, the basics, the eye contact, the listening, the the, the back and forth, the mutuality, so my wish for for people who, through no fault of their own, were raised this way, is to is to learn to understand the importance of it and to kind of be be mentored by people like you. Well, that that's our mission to uh, be able to uh, reach out and and uh, have an impact on that generation between eighteen and ages twenty eight. Um, you know, parents actually hire us to help their young adults successfully navigate that dangerous decade of decision making. Um, so many of them become lost or lonely or left behind during that time frame, and they don't really know, you know, where they're supposed to be in that equation. So we try to help them uh, launch a plan of action for a great life and powerful relationships and lucrative careers, whether they go to college or not. Right, right. Very good. So, at this point, what um, what can people do um, to beef up their resume, to um, learn how to interview? Where are we at this point? Well, the first thing I would have them do, if if you have someone that is feeling lost and not knowing where to go next, they perhaps they've graduated from college, they've moved back into mom and dad's basement and they just can't get a foothold, they can start right now by volunteering. Mm -hmm. Get into an organization and not just show up when it's convenient for them. Think of it as a second job and uh, show up on time, do more than what you're asked, and get to know the supervisors. Mm -hmm. Because when you can impress the supervisors where you're volunteering, quite often they are interconnected in the community as well. Um, If if possible, get an internship with a company you're interested in. And if you can't do that, then find someone that's working in a position that you might be interested in. 
shadow them. Ask if you can follow them. We had a um, a young man who really did not know what he wanted to do. He changed his major, I think, maybe five times. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he still just, he wanted, he started out to be an architect, couldn't figure it out. He ended up talking to the adults in his life. And his mom said, well, you know what? There is a, uh, I have a good friend that's a physical therapist, and she absolutely loves her job. Go talk to her. He didn't even know what a physical therapist was. He had never used one. So he shadowed her and found that it required a great deal of creativity because each patient had different needs, and he was absolutely fascinated by it. But it, he had to go, he had to get out of his comfort zone. You know, they, uh, too often kids think, well, let's see, there's a handful of careers. Oh, my gosh, we've had other students that discovered they could get into the art of creating prosthetics for people that need a, a limb. And, mm. again, it's highly creative, um, but it incorporates both art and science, wow. and they may never have thought of that before. No. It's amazing. Uh, the dic- Dictionary of Occupational Titles, the dot is so incredibly thick, and there are so many jobs to be had that we don't even know about or think about. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and for the kids that are floundering to go, well, gee, what should I do with my life? Sometimes it just helps to, uh, you know, go... What if you have an interest in dogs? I'm just throwing something out randomly here. Mm-hmm. Um, go work at a at a, a pet shelter mm-hmm. and see what they do. And you may go, oh, I don't want to do that at all. Uh, one of the people we profile in our book, um, she loved animals. She was going to be a veterinarian her whole life. She just assumed she was going to do that. She got to her senior year after taking all these veterinary courses and went. I don't want to do this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> she ended up she ended up uh becoming a uh, a leadership trainer because she really enjoyed working with people more than she enjoyed working with animals. But it took her till her senior year in college before she understood that gee, what I thought I wanted, I didn't really want, and it was because of an experience that she had overseas and an on an overseas uh uh semester that changed her whole focus. So go do those things that, you know, in the volunteer side especially, that just have some interest to you. It will help you either to go, no, I don't want to go in that direction, or, wow, I think that's really cool. I never knew that there was this aspect of that job. That part is really interesting to me. I couldn't agree with you two more about learning about the world through volunteering and helping others. And um, I know that there are some places people can go to almost like um, central places to find out what kind of jobs you can volunteer in. Is that readily available for people, that kind of Um, directory, if you will? There is. There is one, uh, an online site called uh, Charity Navigator. Oh, and you can put in um, a different, uh, say you want to find charities that work with foster kids, for instance. You can put in the keyword foster kids and pull that up. And that's one, one place to um, kind of look for things like that. Uh, another thing is, um, let's see, do you, do you, can you think well, of Well, and even, even if you go into Charity Navigator, and you just browse through some of the titles, mm-hmm. not even looking for something specific, you're going to find nonprofits, even in your own community, I think there's uh, five or 600 of them just in the metro Denver area. Um, you can just get a list of charities and see the huge variety of things that they do. And sometimes the name of the charity won't tell you what they do, but if you if you find the name interesting, Go look them up. They all are going to have websites and, and you know, find out what they do. You, part of finding out what direction you want to go in your life is up to you. 
you have to start doing the research, investigating different arenas, being open to uh, opportunities and being aware of them when they appear, uh, but, but doing the work to try to find out what gives you a passion. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, you're not likely to stick it out very well, and you're not likely to do a great job with it. Yes. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And I am really surprised to hear in, in my own practice um, so many people say they don't really have a passion or um, women who would like to uh, start working, start doing something. They're of a certain age. They've completed the traditional chore of, uh, or I'm sorry, chore job of raising children, and uh, they're ready to go into the world again, and, and they tell me they don't have any particular interests. It's really kind of starting from scratch. If you start mm-hmm. from nowhere, I have no interests. What, well, what do you do with that? Yeah. It, I think that's one of the hardest things to find in your life is your why. Um, and mm. it, in some ways, rather than passion, I like to think of it as find your compassion. Mm, where you know where does your heart bleed is there anything that you've experienced in your life or people that you know that are struggling with something that just breaks your heart start there you know you may want to get involved in um, find out more about the cancer foundations for instance or working with children or you know whatever it is but uh, we we learned from a man um, who had been in a uh, in a mentoring circle with Warren Buffett, the billionaire and yes. uh, wow. third richest man in the world, by the way. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Warren Buffett every year, because mentoring was so important to him, <clears throat> um, he uh, took on he takes on twelve people every year. All right, well, um, one of the things that we uh, heard about was from this young man who was in uh, Warren Buffett's exclusive group was that he had to determine what his why was, what his purpose was, what made him get up in the morning and be excited about life. And he said, I don't know. And Warren Buffett sent him out the door. He said, until you know your why, you can't move forward. Mm. So I think just finding that that purpose is it's hard but it's going to take some work and it's important that you find that that meaning in your life oh wow that is wonderful well on that note i can't thank you enough for coming back to us lindy and tom schneider author uh, authors of college secrets of highly successful people keys to launching a great life And that is Schneider, S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. And your book is readily available. And your your website is for people to um, learn about how to be mentored by you. It's americascollegeadvisors.com. That's advisors, O-R-S. So americascollegeadvisors.com. We have lots of free resources there that people can access, uh, blog posts, um, and if they want to get in touch with us to uh, work with us directly, uh, they can also email us at uh, support at americascollegeadvisors.com. Thank you both, Tom and Lindy Schneider, and this is Dr. Duffy Spencer saying goodbye for now and wishing you great relationships.